solving rational inequalities. We have to first determine what the asymptotes are. And we're only concerned about vertical asymptotes. So let's first determine what the vertical asymptote is. The vertical asymptotes were determined by letting the denominator equal zero. So we can just say x plus 4 equals zero. Our vertical asymptote would then be that x equals negative 4. So we have a vertical asymptote at that point. Okay, because we're going to take our inequality and we're going to set it equal to zero. We're going to make it an equation. So if we set this equal to zero, now if we look at this, the only way that we can get this equal to zero is if the numerator is zero. So that would mean that x minus 2 has to equal zero, which would tell you that x equals 2 is a possible solution. Now, if we put x equals 2, because our inequality is greater than or equal to, x equals 2 is going to be allowed. It's going to make this equal to 0. So when we put this on our number line, we're going to have to put a solid dot. If we look at the denominator, x cannot equal negative 4. So it's going to be an open dot on our number line. And that's how we're going to determine whether it's closed and open dot, is the asymptotes are always going to be open dots. And then it's determined by whether the inequality is equal to or just greater than or less than. That tells you whether the other solutions are included or not. So we're going to go, let's go make this 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. We know negative 4 is not going to be allowed. We know that 2 is allowed. And now we have to test our inequality. And the same thing that we did when we were solving quadratics. We're going to go back and test the original. So let's test x equals negative 5. Uh, that should be an equal sign. So if we test x equals negative 5, again, we're just going to put in the brackets, or we're just going to put in the, the signs. If negative 5 goes in the top, that's going to make the numerator a negative. If we put negative 5 in the bottom, that's going to make the denominator negative. Now, is a negative divided by a negative greater than or equal to 0? Well, of course, that's going to be a positive value, which has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is a big bad yes. That, makes, that solves the original inequality. So let's test a point in between. And let's test x equals 0. If we put 0 in the top, we're going to get a negative value. If we put 0 in the bottom, we're going to get a positive value. A positive divided by a negative is going to give us a negative value. And is a negative greater than or equal to 0? No, it's not. And I should have just on here indicated that I'm shading my number line, so I'm going to include those values. The numbers between negative 4 and 2 are not included. And again, let me just make it fairly clear here that we're testing in between these boundary points. Those are what we are concerned about. And then what we're going to do is let's test x equals 3. If we put x equals 3 in the top, we're going to get positive value. If we put x equals 3 in the bottom, we're going to get positive value. Is a positive divided by a positive greater than or equal to 0? Well, of course it is. So we're going to include all of these values, just like so. So what's our solution? Well, we know that x has to be less than negative 4, and x has to be greater than or equal to 2. There is our solution. And again, it's an inequality, so we're going to have an inequality as the solution. So here's the steps to solving a rational inequality. And just these are the things all that we did. The first thing I did is we made the inequality an equation and solved the equation marking the solutions on a number line. So that's what we do. We set it equal to, equal to each other and then solved it. We determine the vertical asymptotes and include them on the number line. So if we go back, that's exactly what we did here, is we determine the vertical asymptotes, put them on the number line. All right. Now we use the solution on the number line as the boundary points and test points between each boundary, determine 
the, whether the region makes the original inequality true or false. And that's exactly what we did if we look back here when we were testing. We tested each of these boundaries. And the last thing is write the regions that solve the inequalities. These are the solutions to the original inequality. And that's exactly what we did down here. So really, it's just a four-step process. 